let's get into our geometry. Now, guys, I've shown you this so many times, but um, oops, sorry. But it's always good to have this information. So just ignore the half examples on the side for now. I just want to look at the reasons that we've learned. I don't know why we have some random highlighting going on here, but anywho. So when it comes to geometry, we have looked at a couple different reasons throughout the year. Um, we've looked at whoops, we've looked at um reasons to do with straight lines, reasons to do with parallel lines, reasons to do with triangles, and we need to know all of them. Now, those of you that um joined boot camps, you would have gotten a full reasons list. And so um that is very helpful for you when you are studying, when you're doing homework, whatever the case is, just to have your reasons list list next to you. So that you are always using the correct reason. Okay, what you need to uh, remember is that when you start moving up in maths, if your reason, I don't want to say is nonsense, but if it's not one of the approved reasons that the sort of Department of Education recognizes, we can't give you that mark. And so it's really important that you're using reasons, as I've said before, that I've either given you or your teacher's given you, because unfortunately, if it's just some random reason that you've made up, we can't give you those marks. All right, so the first reason that we had a look at was the reason that dealt with angles around a point. And we know that angles around a common central point add up to 360. Now, everything in the blocks here are your reasons. So if you are going to use angles around a point, you have to give a reason for that statement. So that was the first reason that we looked at. The second reason that we looked at was angles on a straight line. The fact that angles that are adjacent, so right next to each other on a straight line, will add up to 180 degrees. They are supplementary. And again, in the block, angles on a straight line would be your reason. We then also had a look at vertically opposite angles, which stated that angles that sat opposite each other at a common vertex or at like a crossing point between lines are equal to each other. So if we just do this a bit better, angle AED is equal to CEB. Come on. Okay. Sorry, guys, I don't know what's happening. I'm just going to move. So AED is equal to CEB, those two opposite angles, as well as the other two vertically opposite angles, AEC and DEB, which would be those two bright blue ones there. Again, we have a reason for our statement, the reason being vert up angles equal. And so like you guys know, whenever we go and sort of do these questions and apply or use these reasons, we actually have to state the reason. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at some examples. I'm gonna just wait here in case you do wanna screenshot the reasons again for yourself. Otherwise, we're gonna have a look at some examples of how to apply this. And basically, we're just gonna go through our geometry reasons so that we know how and when to apply them given a question. Okay, so if you haven't screenshotted and you want to, I suggest you do it now. I'm about to move the screen. Okay, so let's have a look at these three questions that I have here. We're gonna go step by step, so we're not gonna rush this. So I'm gonna move this down a touch, so I've got some space. And now grade eights, remember, I've always said to you that when you are doing geometry, sometimes your teachers will do this for you. Not always, but sometimes we do. I know I did it for my grade eights in their exam, but we always separate our page into two halves for geometry. We're going to give a statement and we're going to give a reason. And if you automatically set your page up like this from the start, it just reminds you that you always have to have something on both sides. You have to have a statement in order to work out whatever you're working out, and you have to give a reason for whatever statement you've made. So it always is just like a little reminder for yourself that we do need to do both of these things. Okay, so if we start with question A over here, we have been given this diagram. We've got one angle on the left, which is an angle of 3x plus 30, and then we've got an angle on the right of 42 degrees. So does anyone want to raise their hand here and tell me which geometric reason would we use to go and find x? Oh, Sanyane? 
them? Yes. We would use angles on a straight line. Perfect. And what is the reason tell us angles on a straight line are to each other? What's their relationship? Uh, they're equal to 180 degrees. Perfect. Exactly. Okay, so guys, exactly what Sinyane said there. <clears throat> we look at the diagram. We see what information we have. Sinyane probably saw the fact that there was a straight line. We had two adjacent angles, so two angles right next to each other on that straight line. And because I had all of that information, I know that when I add these two angles together, I have to get a total of 180 degrees, my reason being angles on a straight line. And so that's the first thing that we always do with geometry. Okay, so I sometimes tell my kids, don't even start writing down stuff yet. First, just look at the diagram, see what you have, see which reasons you can apply, and then start to see how is that going to be helpful to find whatever it is you're looking for. Right, as you move up in geometry, you're going to find that obviously things get more complex. And sometimes it's easy to just like look at your diagram first, break down all the information you have, and then start answering the questions. All right, so what we now know is that 3x plus 30 plus 42 degrees must equal 180 degrees. And all of this because of angles on a straight line. Now, grade eight, obviously, if you write out the word angles and you write out the word straight, that's fine. But when it comes to your geometry reasons, you are allowed to shorten. You are allowed to abbreviate your reasons to some extent. Obviously, we still need to be able to tell what they mean. And that's why I'm saying only use the reasons and the sh abbreviations that I've given you. But that's absolutely fine. You don't have to write out the word angles in this case or the word straight. Okay, now guys, hopefully you remember me saying on Monday that algebra comes into everything. Algebra is not just algebra. Algebra is in every section of math. And if you have a look at what you have on the left-hand side, this is algebra. It is an algebraic equation we're solving for x. And so this is, again, why it's so, so important that we know how to do algebra. We know how to work with expressions and equations because algebra comes up everywhere. Okay, so if we now go and solve this equation, obviously, guys, a couple of different ways that you can deal with this. I'm going to break it down step by step. First thing that I see is that I've got the like, the like terms of 30 and 42 on the left-hand side. So I'm going to add them together first, which gives me 3x plus 72 equals 180 degrees. And then I'm going to start with my inverse operation. So I'm going to subtract 72 on both sides. So I have 3x equals 180 minus 72. And so x, 3x is equal to 108 degrees. Now remember, guys, our goal is to solve. Sorry, I need to plug in. Our goal is to solve for x. We don't want the value of 3x. We want the value of x. And so again, using our inverse operations, we now want to divide both sides by 3 in order to get x alone. Let's get a calculator. I have so many calculators in my bag. I don't know why I chose to take the one that's in a pencil case. But anyways, so 108 divided by 3, thank you all of you who are on it, gives me an x value of 36 degrees. All right, now once you solve for x, you're done. There's nothing else that you need to do. We've gotten the value of x for the specific diagram. If you wanted to, you could go and substitute it back into, give up. You can go and substitute it back into your original, into your original equation to make sure that when you add the 3x plus 30 plus the 42, you do get 180. Obviously, that's a good way to always make sure that you've done things correctly. Um, and so much like with our algebraic equations, a good way to check your answer is always through substitution. Right, I will let you guys take screenshots of these things just now, but let's have a look at question B. There's question B. Took a second. So let's have a look at what we have here for question B. And then again, if someone wants to raise their hands to tell me what reason 
they think we can use in order to solve for x here, please do. So I'm just setting up my work. Right, I wonder, do you want to tell me what reason would we use? Hi, ma'am. Hi. Um, ma'am, the, um, the reason that we can use here is vertically opposite angle. Nice, excellent. Okay, so guys, exactly. We see that there's this cross shape. We see that these two angles are vertically opposite to each other. And so we know that they must be equal. Because I know all of this, I can set up my equation. So now I know that 3x minus 12 degrees must be equal to 108 degrees. And exactly as Wanda said there, vert up angles equal. Okay, so take a second, look at your diagram, see what it is that you're working with, and then you can go and solve for x. Right, so I have put the equation up there for you guys. What I want you to do is solve for x for me. So you've got the first step, you know what reason you're doing, or what reason you're using. I want you guys to go and solve, sorry, I want you to solve for x for me here. Remember, once you've got an answer, you can put your answer in the chat for us so we can see. And remember, grade eights, again, if you want to check, substitute back into the picture or into your original statement and make sure that it does actually make sense based on the geometric reason that you have. And always remember your reason. I know I've already put it there, but just as a reminder, always remember your reasons. Nice. Okay, let's have a look. So solving our equation, I'm going to add 12 to both sides. So I've got 108 degrees plus 12 degrees. Opposite operations, remember. 108 plus 12 is 120 degrees. I don't want 3x. I want x. I need to divide both sides by 3. And so x is equal to 40 degrees. Now, guys, just as an example of what I mean by substitute to check, 3 times 40 is 120, minus 12 is, 100, is 108. 108 is equal to 108. So the vertically opposite reason that I've used does stand. It is correct. They are, in fact, equal to each other. And so I can use that substitution to double check my work. Alrighty, again, I will make this small in a second or two for you guys to screenshot, but let's have a look at question C. Alrighty, so take a look at question C, and then again, hands up, who can tell me what reason they think we can use here to go and solve for X? <clears throat> okay, so Nyanya, what do you think? Angles around a point. Nice. And what do angles around a point add up to? What's their relationship? 
360 degrees. Nice. Okay, guys. So there you go. Again, we just take a second, we don't know what we're dealing with, and then we decide what we're doing. So because we've got the central point around which all of these angles exist, we've got angles around a point which we know when we add them all together, I must get 360 degrees. Now, guys, this is so, so important. And the reason I'm pointing this out is because so many of my grade eights, when I gave them a question like this, or when I give them questions like this, they know it's angles around a point, but then they make the silly mistake of saying they add up to 180. Angles on a straight line add up to 180. Angles all the way around a point, so if it forms a circle, is 360 degrees. So always just double check what it is you're working with right so i want you guys to try this one by yourselves give your statement make sure you give your reason and let's solve for x So guys, again, remember, make sure you've got your reason. Make sure you solve using all of those um, inverse operations that we spoke about on Monday. What did he say? Friday. I'm going to give you another minute and then I'm going to go through it. Like what I'm seeing so far, guys, well done. Okay, nice guys, well done. Right, so 2x, I don't think I'm gonna have enough space, but we're gonna try, minus 10, plus 53, I'm definitely not gonna have enough space. All right. Always like optimistically think I've given myself enough space and then it just turns out I'm never right. We plus can see though, we can see and we, okay. this, see. Plus 53, plus 62, plus 85 must equal 360 degrees. And my reason, as you guys have said, angles around, you can say round or around, doesn't matter, a point. And you can abbreviate point to PT. Okay, so I'm just going to neaten up this whole left-hand side here. So minus 10, plus 53, plus 62, plus 85 is... Uh, I'm panicking, 110. Hundred ninety is equal to 360. Inverse operations. I'm now going to say 360 minus 190. 
And so 2x is equal to 170. Okay, next thing guys is we don't want 2x, we want just x. So we're going to divide both sides by 2. And so x is equal to 85 degrees. Again, if you want to check yourself, just sub it into the original question or sub it into your original statement and make sure that when you add the angles up around that point, you do get 300 and 60 degrees. So there's always a way to check yourself when it comes to geometry through substitution or back into the diagram. So use that. Okay, there's no point in getting things wrong if you can check. Right, so there are the three questions. You guys can take a screenshot of the three of them. Those are all dealing with our sort of basic straight line reasons. Okay, so we're taking a screenshot. Guys, remember, if you've got questions, please do ask. Um, if there's anyone who needs to raise a hand, obviously, at this point, you're more than welcome to. Hopefully, because this is revision, we're all okay, but please do ask if you have questions. Good. Okay. Right, so the next sort of group of reasons that we had a look at, okay, again, just ignore the examples, we'll get to them, is our parallel line reasons. Now, your parallel line reasons, there are three of them, and you can only, and let me say this very clearly, so ears open, you may only use these reasons if you are given parallel lines. If there are no parallel lines, you can't use them. So our first parallel line reason that we learned was corresponding angles. So we learned about the fact that if we've got these parallel lines given to us, and here, guys, I know that they're parallel because they have those arrows on them, the angles sitting in corresponding positions are equal to each other. Again, we have reasons, corresponding angles, and remember, we always then state our parallel lines. If you don't have labels, you quite literally just say parallel lines, but those are corresponding angles. So it sort of sits with the F shape. The next reason that we learned about was cointerior angles. Now, really importantly, again, we've got parallel lines and cointerior angles are the angles that sit inside the two parallel lines. Now, importantly, they're not equal. They are supplementary. If you add them together, you will get 180 degrees. Again, these are co-interior angles. So we give that as a reason. And really, really importantly, co-interior are not equal. They add to 180. The final um, parallel line reason that we learned about was then alternate angles. So alternate angles is the sort of Z in whatever sort of zigzag shape you want to work with. And the angles in alternate positions to each other are equal. Again, we have a reason, alt angles, because they're alternate angles. We always have to give that. So these are the three parallel line reasons that we learned, um, again, that we need to be able to apply. So I'm just going to do that in case you want to take a screenshot of those reasons. We have done them, so you should have them, but just in case. And then we're going to have a look at these examples on the side here. All righty, so let's have a look at question A. So based on what we've just discussed, who wants to tell me which reason I could use to work out the value of X in question A? Butler, what do you think? I think that they are Corresponding angles. Very nice. And are corresponding angles equal or what, what is their relationship? They are parallel. Okay. So guys, remember corresponding uh, angles, these parallel lines that we have. Again, my arrows are not great on these parallel lines, but it's fine. We just move with it. 
Because I've got those parallel lines, I know that the angles in corresponding positions, exactly as Boutlier said, are equal to each other. So we can now set up our statement. We know that 5x is equal to 125 degrees. My reason, corresponding angles. And now guys, we always state the parallel lines because there's no labels here. That's not the end of the world. All we just say is parallel lines. That's it. Okay, if there's no labels, just say parallel lines. That's absolutely fine. Again, we obviously don't want 5x. We want to know what x is. And so what we need to do is we need to go and divide both sides by five. So if I divide both sides by five, get that x is equal to 25 degrees. Okay, so nice and easy there. Corresponding angles, it's that f shape. We set up our equation, state which angles are equal, and we can go and solve. So what's really important to grade eight is when you're given a diagram, always identify your parallel lines. So the lines that have the arrows on them, identify them for yourself so that you can look out for corresponding pointeria and alternate angles. Right, again, I'll let you take a screenshot. Actually, no, maybe take a screenshot of it now just because it was quite small earlier. So let's take our screenshots. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Right, so here's question B. Again, terrible labeling on my part. I think maybe I just need to get over it. If we have a look at question B based on the information that I have given you, does anyone want to raise their hand and tell me what reason they think that we can use here in order to determine the value of X? Sanyane? Ma'am, we can use alternate angles. Excellent. Okay, so guys, alternate angles. Again, here are my parallel lines, A, B, and C, D. If we now have a look, we can see that we've got that like sort of zigzag shape being formed. And so we know that this angle is equal to its alternate angle. And so we can set up our equation. All righty. So, statement reason we know that 3x plus 10 degrees is equal to 70 degrees we know this because they are alternate angles now because we do have labels for our parallel lines we can say that the line a b so from point a to point b is parallel to the line c d once we know that, we solve our equation. We're back to algebra. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is, is I'm going to subtract 10 on both sides, inverse operations. So 3x is equal to 60 degrees. We don't want 3x, we just want x. And so x is equal to 60 divided by 3, which is 20. Okay, so again, grade 8, it's Algebra, it's solving an equation. That's all we need to do. We just need to make sure we remember our inverse operations. And we need to make sure we are applying our um, geometric reasons correctly. Okay, so let's take a screenshot of this one. We're going to have a look at one more. You guys are going to try this one by yourselves. Okay. All right, so here's question C. My parallel lines are just embarrassing. Okay. So what I want from you guys is all the lowercase letters. So when I say the lowercase letters, I want values for W, X, Y, and, no, let's try that again. V, W, X, Y, and Z. So those ones I've highlighted in green, I want 
the size or the value of all of those lowercase letters. Okay, so you're trying this by yourselves. Let's give it a go. Let's see what we come up with. Usually, guys, remember I've told you this before. Usually, if you start in alphabetical order, if you answer it in alphabetical order, you should then find the angles quite easily. So if you're not too sure, try and start with X. But honestly, I don't particularly, with X, would help if I knew my alphabet, with V. But I don't particularly mind where you start. As long as you give me all of the values, I'm, I'm okay. <clears throat> so remember grade eight when i give you a question like this you can use any geometric reason as long as it applies to like the question or to the picture you can use anything. And as we start to, I don't want to say like make them, more, yeah, as we start to make them more complicated or as we start to add more angles that you have to find, often there's going to be different ways to find some of these angles. So just because I've used one reason or I've used one method to find an angle doesn't mean that yours will necessarily have the same reason. I will try as I go along to give you options of what the reasons could be. But just bear in mind that often in geometry, there can be different reasons for the same angle, and it's perfectly valid. So you will get the marks. Okay, so remember we're giving this a try. Obviously, guys, if you've got questions, just let us know. I'm also happy if you do have questions and you want to raise your hand, that's absolutely fine. It's quite a few of us, or it's a small amount of us tonight. So I'm okay if you want to raise your hand if you've got a question. Otherwise, remember, put it in the chat. I'm going to give you like another two or so three minutes, and then we'll have a look. Oh, so now they're on it. Well done. Again, guys, it doesn't matter where you start. If you started with B, awesome. If you started with X, fine. If you started with Y, fine. As long as I get all five of those angles, I'm happy. Remember your parallel lines as well. And grade eights, what you need to remember is that in geometry, we give you information for a reason so for example those parallel lines i wouldn't tell you that they're parallel unless it was important that you knew that so any information we give you on a diagram or in the question it is important and you're going to have to use it we don't give you useless information we don't try and throw you off with random information we give you what is useful and so you should be using it <clears throat> Okay, let us have a C. So I'm going to start alphabetically, although apparently I didn't really know my alphabet 
five minutes ago, but we're going to try. The first letter here is V. So if I have a look at V, V is vertically opposite to 126. So nice and easy, V is equal to 126 degrees vertically opposite or vert op angles equal. Now, especially with these types of questions, grade eights, I like to write in the information as I go along, just in case it helps me. Might, it might not, I don't know, but it could be useful. So that's V. The next lesson in the alphabet is W, and there's a couple different ways that you can find W. So one way you can see the W is through the parallel lines in the shape of a zigzag. So you can see that W and 126 are alternate angles. That's one way to do it. Another way that you can find W is you can see the sort of upside down backwards F shape, again, with these parallel lines. And so W is equal to 126. Either one is absolutely fine. Makes no difference which one you chose to use. So your reason for W should either be alternate angles or corresponding angles. I'm going to go alternate angles because that's the one I saw first. And remember your parallel lines. I don't have labels here, so I just state parallel lines. Okay, so now I know that's 126. Next letter in my alphabet is X. Again, we can see that X is vertically opposite to W. Or you can see that, try that line again. Or you can see that X and 126 are corresponding angles to each other. So that F shape. Either one's absolutely fine, whatever one you go with. I saw corresponding first, so I'm going to go x is equal to 126. Corresponding angles, again, state parallel lines. Okay, so this is 126, w, x, y. So if I have a look at where y is, I can see that y corresponds to 100. And so y is equal to 100 degrees because of corresponding angles. Again, state parallel lines. Um, so that's why when it comes to z, I'm just making sure that I haven't missed anything. Z, the only reason we can use here for z is um, vertically opposite angles. It's equal to y. So Z is equal to Y, so Z is equal to 100 degrees, and this is all because of vert up angles. Okay, so again, guys, what order you choose to do it is up to you, but make sure that if you start with a specific letter, <clears throat> excuse me, you put the appropriate reason. Okay, so if you started with X, for example, it would be because of the corresponding angles. Make sure that reason is there. I've chosen to do it alphabetically, and that's absolutely fine, but you don't have to. Just make sure your reasons are with the correct angle. So those were your five angles there. And as you notice, there's actually no working out you needed to do. You just needed to state the angle. But you did need to look carefully at your diagram to see what information you had. Okay, so let's take our screenshots of this. And this is, guys, your okay? words again. This is definitely a type of question we would ask you in an exam. It would be a slightly harder question because there are a couple uh, angles we're asking you for. And this would be, again, depending on how many um, angles I asked you, this would be for 10 marks because you get a mark for each statement and each reason. So a nice 10 mark question like this, you can all do. Right, you've just done it now, so you definitely are capable of doing that. And 10 marks in, say, a 50 mark test is already 20% of your test that you've got. And so, when it comes to questions like this, don't be overwhelmed by them. Start alphabetically and go one by one. Even, oh, even if you don't get all five angles, and let's say you only got three of the angles, that's still six marks that you've guaranteed yourself. So don't be intimidated by these questions. Just go carefully one by one and they can be worth a lot of marks and can get you the marks that you want. Alrighty.
You know, are we okay there on the chat? Was it the reason? Alrighty, guys, so let's take a quick two minute break. I'm not gonna do a whole brain break just because we don't have time for that, but I do would like to at least do some triangles before we um, end off. So Nanya, I'll chat to you in a second or two, but yes, it is technically our last lesson. But let's just get up, have a stretch, move your body. I'm gonna carry on in about two minutes. In the meantime, guys, if you want to screenshot the triangle reasons that I've got there on the screen, go for it. Like I said, this is your chance to just run to the bathroom or just get up and stretch. We're going to carry on now now. Hey okay, guys, let's do it. So like I said, I just want to at least be able to go through the reasons and maybe do one or two of these questions. Just because triangles are important, we need to know them. And again, this is something that you will now use until matric. All of these reasons you use from grade eight to matric, you need to know them. So we have four triangle reasons that we need to know. Um, the first one that we learned was the fact that our three angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So uh, angles in a triangle add up to 180. Our reason, sum of angles in a triangle. The next reason that we learned was that the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the two interior opposite angles. So this angle outside my triangle is equal to the two opposite ones added together. And that's because of exterior angles of a triangle. And then our third reason was that if we have a triangle with two equal sides, then the two angles opposite those equal sides are also equal to each other. So if we know that sides are equal, we know that the angles opposite them are equal. And that was because of angles up equal sides. We also then learned our first um, converse reason, which was the fact that if you have two equal angles, then the sides that are opposite those equal angles are then also equal. So in this case, the opposite is true. If you're now given the equal angles, you then know that the sides opposite them are equal. Okay, so we have four triangle reasons and we need to be able to apply them. So, yeah, pretty sorry, I realized that as I was doing this. I'm just going to zoom in on the first two if you want to take a screenshot. And then I'll scroll down to the next two for a screenshot. I realized it was a touch small as I was doing that. I apologize. Okay, so that's the first two. Here's the second two. So we've got sum of angles in a triangle is equal to 180. An exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the two opposite interior ones. Angles opposite equal sides are equal. And sides opposite equal angles are equal. So we've got essentially four reasons that we need to know when it comes to triangles. All right, I hope we've got our screenshots. Let's have a look at an example or two. Alrighty, so if we have a look at our first example, hands up, which reason could I use here to work out X? Page. 
Sunyane on it tonight. Always on it. Sunyane, what what reason? Angles in a triangle. And what do angles in a triangle add up to? 180 degrees. Nice. Okay, so exactly that, guys. 2x minus 10 plus 52 plus 36, I've run out of space again, must be equal to 180 degrees. And this is because of angles in a triangle. Now, some people write the reason a bit differently. I just say sum of angles in triangle. Some people use interior angles of a triangle. Some people use angles in a triangle, supplementary. There's a bunch of different reasons for this one. As long as it's one of my reasons or one of your teacher's reasons, you're good. Right, so then we go and solve this equation. So we've got 2x. Thank you. I wonder, I was looking at that now and I was like, that's not right. Sorry, guys. 36, not 360. So minus 10 plus 52 plus 36 gives me 78 is equal to 180. So we're going to subtract 78 on both sides. So 180 minus 70, 78. And so 2x is equal to 102 degrees. We obviously only want x, so we're going to have to divide both sides by 2. And so x is equal to 50, ooh, ooh, 51 degrees. So grade eights, once again, once you've set up your initial statement, once you've set up your original English day, your initial equation, it's quite literally just a case of solving an equation, which you know how to do because we've done equations. Connie, exactly. Also, oh, can I not do maths? Connie, do you mean 31 or 51? Let's just double check that. 